Hello everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinist. Uh, today we're looking at uh, some programming techniques which involves uh, cutting radiuses on a corner of a part. Um, I got a couple of examples down here and what we're going to look at today. Um, this is just a little project that the students work on uh, programming techniques to produce a corner radius on this part. Now traditionally, uh, this is usually the, the go-to uh, tool for this operation using a corner radius forming tool like this uh, to cut down the edge of the part. Now these work really good, really efficient tools, uh, fairly inexpensive for these tools, uh, but we do have some limitations with these. Uh, you know, for the most part, a lot of these tools come in just nominal sizes in eighth or one sixteenth increments. So every once in a while we run into a situation where maybe we need uh, uh, a radius on the corner of a part that we can't find the correct tool for. Now the only option is to uh, go with a custom ground tool or uh, you know some situation like that. Uh, what we're going to look at today is actually using a ball nose end mill to form this radius with some simple programming techniques. Now another downfall with these form tools is it sometimes gets a little tricky getting our depth and our diameter set correctly so the corners of this tool don't gouge or ding into the part, both on the uh, diameter and on the end of that radius. So sometimes there can be a little bit of a sacrifice in these tangent points where the radius actually blends to the perpendicular surfaces. So we may not always get a full tangent to tangent radius on this part. So with this technique that we're using, it's very simple to dial in both our diameter and our depth you can see with our radius gauge to really get a nice tangent blend with that radius. So I'm gonna go over the chalkboard. We're gonna go over the technique that we're gonna use on this part. All right, so I have a couple of different uh, sketches on the board here, just to kind of illustrate the process that we're gonna go through. This is looking at the top view of our part right here, and here is our radius that we're gonna be machining. Um, just an end view of the part, looking at our X positive direction down the part. And essentially what we're going to be doing is taking our ball nose end mill and interpolating that radius along the corner of that part. So we're going to be doing a radius move in this direction and we're going to step over do a radius move in the opposite direction. So looking at the top view of our part, I'm placing my origin in this lower left corner. So my first position is going to place the center of this ball nose end mill right along that tangent point at the top of the part. And from there, I'm gonna do that arc move down to the opposite end of the part. And then what we're gonna do is go into our program and we're gonna do an incremental X step over of 20 thousandths. And then we're gonna do an opposite interpolation move back to the top of the part. And then we're gonna step over an additional 20 thousandths to prepare the machine to go into a looping cycle. So we're basically just gonna loop that cycle all the way across the length of that part. Similar to our last video, we did uh, uh, cutting the angle. We're gonna do that same process for this radius. So looking over at the next step here, again, our first pass, we're, stopping, we're starting at the uh, top of our part with the center of the tool lined up with the tangent point of the arc. And we're gonna be doing a counterclockwise move, bringing the tool to this position. So essentially that line of code is gonna look similar to this. Now since we're interpolating in our Y and Z axis, we're gonna to have to switch our interpolation plane to G19. That's gonna allow us to interpolate an arc move in the Y and Z uh, axis there. And then we're gonna do counterclockwise arc, moving to this Y position, so the edge of the part being Y0, we're programming the center line of that ball it's gonna position it at Y negative 0.375, the radius of our three quarter inch ball nose. And we're bringing the Z position down the tip of our tool so the tangent point of the ball is matched up to the tangent point of the part radius, which is half inch plus the radius of the ball to Z negative 0.875. And then of course we have our vectors. So our Y vector, which is our center line from the start of the arc, essentially that's zero distance and direction of zero. But now our Z vector, we're programming essentially to the center line of that ball. So the Z vector, our K value, the direction is going negative direction into the part. The distance, half inch, plus the radius of our ball, negative 0.875. 
So that's going to be our first pass. Then we're going to step over our incremental amount in X of 20 thousandths. Then we're going to look at our second pass. We're going to be basically just reversing the direction going right back to where we start. Now we're going to be doing a clockwise radius. So again, we have our plane change interpolation in our Y and Z work plane. But now we're going to do a G2 motion, which is clockwise, moving back to Y.5, Z0. And now our vectors for that, we have a distance with a direction from the center of the ball to the center of our part radius, positive 0.875. And then our Z vector is essentially zero, so K0. So I'm going to flip the board around. We're going to look at the G code for this program. So here I have our program. We're going to be utilizing, again, a subprogram with a looping command, real similar to our last video, machining the angled vice jaw. Uh, we're going to throw in a couple of more codes here because we're doing some interpolation moves. So again, starting with my program number and my first status line, I go into absolute positioning, inch measurement. And because we're doing some plane changes here, moving from X and Y to the Y, Z work plane, I just want to make sure I start off in my X and Y interpolation plane and of course cancel any kind of cutter compensation that may be active. Then I go into rapid traverse, call up my three quarter inch ball nose T1M6. My next line I'm going to get the spindle running, speed of 8000, clockwise direction. And then I'm ready to position to my first point. I call up my workpiece coordinate system and I move to that X, negative 0.375, places the center of the tool uh, just off the edge of the part. And then Y.5, that's going to make the center line of my ball right to the tangent point of the top of that radius. And then I'm going to call for my height offset. I'm using tool 1, so I'm using height offset 1, and I move to a clearance plane 3 inches above the part. And then next I'll move to a feed plane, a point 1, turning my coolant on. And then I'm going to feed right down to Z0, the top surface of the part at 100 inches a minute. And then I'm going to place it into my subprogram. So I call out my subprogram, which is going to be my actual tool path. And I tell it to loop that path 150 times. Now the math I did is I started negative 0.375 from the edge of the part. My part length is five and a half inches. And I'm just going to bring the center of the tool another hundred thousandths off the edge of the part. So it ended up to be a loop count of 149 uh, 0.5 I believe so we just went up 150 loops now in some of your controls out there some of the funnel controls and other machines may use a K for a loop count too so you'll have to verify your exact control some machines use an L some will use a K and then we go into our sub program so I'm going to go over to my sub program here and once we're in a position our first move again is our counterclockwise move interpolating in the Y and Z work plane to my Y negative 0.375, my Z, and of course our vectors. And then we go back to a linear mode, but I'm gonna move incrementally now, G91, and I just shift over 20 thousandths. And that gets it into position to go back up to the top of the part, interpolating uh, G2 direction to Y.5, back to Z0 with our vectors. And then in order to get it ready to loop, I'm going to move it over another incremental distance at G1 of X 20 thousandths. So then when it goes into a loop, it's ready to do the G3 move again. Now at the end of the program, I always like to make sure I go back to absolute positioning before I send it back to the main program. And I always like to make sure I go back to my X and Y work plane too in case I have any other interpolation moves in my main. And then M99 sends it back to my main program. And once it loops at our 150 times, marching across that part incrementally 20 thousandths along the x-axis, I just bring the spindle back up to my clearance plane and then back to my home positions, bringing the table forward and end a program. So we'll go ahead and get this loaded in the machine. We'll show you how the toolpath runs. All right, so I have our programs loaded into the control. Again, our main program, sub-program loaded into the memory of the machine. I have my tool touched off, all of our work offsets are set. We're ready to rock and roll on this.
All right, so we're back to the bench here. We got our part out of the machine, cleaned up and deburred. Uh, just one quick look at our part here. We're looking at our surface finish. Now again, this was a 20,000 step over in the X axis each direction. We've got a fairly good finish here. I would be pretty satisfied with that. But if we were looking for a finer finish, real simple to go back into our sub program and change our 20,000 step over to 10, 15, five, whatever we choose and just change our loop count to march that across. Now again, maybe a little bit slower process than using a standard form cutter, but if we're in a shop or we don't have a specific cutter for the radius that we need, this could get us out of a pinch. Or if we have an oddball or maybe a metric size radius that we have to place on a part, uh, definitely a good option. Now looking at this specific tool path where we're machining that radius in the Y and Z plane, we're doing a lot of positioning along the Y axis. So we're doing a lot of movements that are not actually removing chips. Um, not the most efficient way uh, to do this type of operation, but just a real simple quick uh, program. You can see very little G-code to accomplish this. Our next video we're going to look at actually doing a traversing motion similar to our V-block program that we wrote to, do, to accomplish this radius. Now it's going to incorporate some variables and some macro parametric programming. So we'll look at that next time. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time.